Sorry for that. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the channel. I'm Gene. I'd like to welcome you. And today, this is from Fierce Wireless by Sue Merrick. On October the 14th, uh, Dish Wireless's Mayo talks about his 21, their 21, 2021 build-out goals. This was written October 14th of this year at 4.24 p.m. Dish Network Executive Vice President of Network Development, Dave Mayo, discussed the company's top priorities for its 5G network for 2020 with the Wireless Infrastructure Association's Connect, Connect event, Connect X. Connect X. Dave Mayo, Dish's Network EVP of Network Development, outlined the company's 2021 build out goals and discussed some of the steps that Dish is taking to create a startup business mentally for its 5G network, even though it's a mature company with successful legacy direct broadcast satellite business, TB, DBS business. <coughs> Mayo, who spoke last week at Connect X, the Wireless Infrastructure and Association annual event that was held in Orlando, Florida, outlined key areas of focus for his team for 2021. Number one on the list is working closely with its open radio access network, Open RAN, vendors, Mavnir Systems, and Altostar, Alto Star, sorry, to make sure that the Open RAN solutions are integrated with Nokia's virtualized core network. Mayo said that it's important for Dish to use Open RAN because disintegrating the software that controls the radio from the physical radio itself. The operator will be able to have more control over the features and functionality of its network. This is a great opportunity to do something very different from the other guys, he said. He also jokingly referred to Ericsson and Nokia as the Scandinavian Mafia because he said that in his prior work with T-Mobile, the operator was always pushing the two vendors to deliver new radio functions and features that would give it better capacity and the, capacity, and the vendors never moved quickly enough. I think this architecture will give us the ability to be proactive and bring those features to the market. Other priorities for this include building a backlog of permits so that the company continuously construct this network without having delays due to permitting issues. Mayo added that co-location applications were prioritized for networks with high co-location rates so that DISH could focus on building a complete market. And he noted that one advantage DISH has to building the Greenfield network today that there are now a large number of towers ready for co-location. In the past, building coverage in a market that would take long time, a long time because towers had to be built. Today, that doesn't happen very often because over the years, U.S. many over the years, U.S. has many more tower sites were constructed to handle additional capacity that is needed today. DISH is also focused on ramping up its supply chain for all the things that it needs to construct this network, including transport. Mayo added that so far the company hasn't expected, experienced any many issues with its supply chain, and he is cautiously optimistic that it won't have any major problems. Interestingly, Dish is building its own cabinets to house its equipment. Mayo said that the company has retrofitted some of some of Dish's warehouses where the company had handled you know, set-top box refurbishment. Now those employees are building cabinets for the company's wireless gear. Another big priority <coughs> for Dish is working through its integration with Amazon Web Services, AWS. In April, Dish announced that it would use AW Amazon's Elastic Compute Cloud EC2 to host its RAN and mobile core for both public and private 5G networks. This means that Dish, uh, Dish We'll use AWS public cloud resources in AWS regions, AWS local zones, and private deployments of AWS outposts in Dish's network locations and on customer premises for its 5G network. Mayo said that the company is working closely with AWS on integrating its platforms and building connectivity. To that end, the company announced earlier this week Experient Communications will provide an autonomous testing and validation of Dish's 5G core network that includes interoperability testing in a public cloud environment with AWS. Finally, the company is also razor-focused on its Las Vegas market, 
where it will begin beta testing in the fourth quarter. Mayo said that he calls the market the Las Vegas lab and said the company is hoping to get that beta test started in a few weeks. Interestingly, Mayo had very high praise for Nexus-1, the vendor the company is using to help it manage all of its deployment. Mayo called it Nexus-1's cloud-based platform, a project management tool, and said that the software tool set was unlike anything he's seen. All right. Well, we want to thank you for watching this channel. Thank you for bringing me up to 92 now. <laughs> we want to thank you all for that. And um, like, subscribe, and uh, comment. You can B-A-F-N, whatever you want to say. Say your piece. You are the... You are the um, Folk, you are the pulse of this channel. And as you know, today, October the 18th, is the day of the Apple event, which is going to be at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. West Coast Time. So I'll be able to see a half an hour of it, but then tonight I'll have to watch a replay at my house. I work tonight. So, thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. And thank you again to my 92 subscribers now. And thank you again. Have a great day. Take care. Boop, boop, boop.